How an allergy helped Daniel Radcliffe nail his very first scene? What advice did Alan Rickman give Rupert Grint to stop him giggling on set? <laughs> what did Tom Felton lie about at his audition to get the part? And why on earth did J.K. Rowling turn down the role of Lily Potter? Hi, I'm Clive. Let's get nostalgic. Harry's teary-eyed secret. Thanks, Hagrid. These were the very first words that Daniel Radcliffe said on camera on the set of The Sorcerer's Stone. Yes, they shot the final scene with Harry and Hagrid's farewell first, which was pretty challenging for the boy, especially taking into account that he didn't have a lot of acting experience yet. There was even more pressure for Daniel on his first day. There were hundreds of extras, and the whole set was huge. Starting to understand how Daniel felt then? I was terrified. But as we all know, the young actor nailed the scene and delivered a heartwarming performance. After Harry hugs Hagrid, you can see that the boy's eyes are wet and puffy, as if he is about to cry. He probably was. Pure acting talent, right? Um, not really. Let me tell you a secret about Daniel's watery eyes in that scene. According to the movie's producer, David Heyman, on the first day, Daniel was wearing contact lenses to make his eyes green and fit the book's description of Harry, though it soon became clear that Daniel had an allergic reaction to them. They were irritating his eyes so much that the filmmakers had no choice but to take the lenses out. The camera rolled soon after, capturing Daniel's pained expression, which was quite appropriate for the scene. Yeah, Harry Potter's eyes were never green in the movies, but at least the acting was perfect. Hermione's fake teeth. My name's Emma Watson, playing the part of Hermione Granger, and I'm having a teeth test. What, a what test? Teeth test. If you read the books, then you should know, Hermione wasn't a pretty girl on the pages. She had those big teeth and messy hair, which the Sorcerer's Stone movie tried to recreate, but failed immediately on the very first day of filming. Why? Because according to the movie's director, Chris Columbus, it was extremely hard for Emma Watson to perform with fake teeth in her mouth. If you pay attention to the final scene of the movie, you'll notice that Hermione is actually wearing those fake teeth. The editors tried to cut the scene properly, so it wouldn't be too obvious. Despite Emma's makeup preparations and hundreds of extras on the set, the young girl felt no pressure on her first filming day. Here, see for yourself. Miss Watson, this is your first day. How does it feel? It feels absolutely fantastic. Told you. Emma had zero filming experience before Harry Potter, but she became a professional actress the moment she got on set. As a child, I loved being on stage. I loved singing. I loved the lights. I loved the adrenaline. I even loved learning lines. I was completely obsessive. She even sounded like Hermione, right? But how is it possible to make a movie with inexperienced experienced actors. There were definitely lots of moments where the director believed things would be very complicated. We'll give you one example. Wait, what does action mean again? On the third shooting day, they filmed the scene with the broom flying lesson in the Hogwarts courtyard. All the kids had a simple task, to raise their hands over the broom and say up. Oh. What could be hard about that, right? Here's how the director described the painful process. I remember saying action, and half of the kids started performing. The other half of the kids are staring into space. We had to stop, and I said, you know, action means we start shooting. That's probably why the filming took... Drum roll, please. 169 days! Wow! Luckily, the young actors were working with a very experienced director, who had previously made great family movies like Home Alone 1 and 2 and Mrs. Doubtfire. So this man already knew how to handle kids on set. For example, do you remember how Neville's broomstick went out of control? Look at his face! He's truly terrified here! How did the director get the inexperienced Matthew Lewis to perform such a hard scene so well? Oh, it's easy. He just put the poor kid in the air for real. Have stunt department put you in a harness and strap you to a broomstick and then you're flying around on this roller coaster type thing. Got and they call it work. It was it was brilliant. Indeed it was, Matthew. Isn't that cool to fly on a broomstick on your first filming day ever? The interesting thing is that it wasn't only the kid actors who were frightened on the Harry Potter set. Some of the adults were too. He had no choice but to play Hagrid. Walking onto a big film set is a scary thing if you're expected to do something when they shout, go now. As an adult, it doesn't get any less scary, really, the first day. This is behind-the-scenes footage of Robbie Coltrane performing Hagrid in his first days. But besides being scared, he was also super excited. Because Coltrane dreamt of being in such a film. Wouldn't it have been fantastic to have been in this? And to know your children and grandchildren will watch it? That's how I feel about Hagrid. It's like being the lion in The Wizard of Oz. Which is an awesome comparison, isn't it? Fun fact, Robin Williams wanted the part of Hagrid. He was even ready to work for free. 
But as the film crew decided to cast British actors and actresses only, Williams didn't get the part. Coltrane was picked by JK personally, and the actor had no choice but to accept the role. Otherwise, his kids would have killed him. Can you imagine me refusing? Oh, they've offered me Hagrid, but I'm not doing it, children. Large Scottish actor found at the bottom of a loch, the actor joked. But do you know who wasn't so excited about his part? Alan Rickman. Let's talk about that. Alan Rickman knew the secret. Believe it or not, but the actor initially rejected the role of Snape, despite the fact that there were three people trying to convince him, the director, the producer, and JK herself. The reason for the rejection was simple. Rickman had already played similar villain roles, and he didn't want to be stuck in them forever. But luckily, two days after the actor rejected Snape's part, he came back and accepted the role. I don't think I had much choice in the matter. Lots of godchildren and nephews and nieces were um, not only excited, I think insistent. <laughs> And the kids truly enjoyed working with Rickman. There was something about his acting that made the little daredevils behave on the set. I was constantly having to remind myself that it was, it's only a film, it's only a film, it's only a film, it's only a film, nothing's real. The only exception was Rupert Grint. This dude giggled constantly during the filming, and even Rickman's sternness couldn't help Grint calm down. I remember Alan Rickman, the first one, told me to relax my face and just not, not think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really work, to be honest. <laughs> well, that happens. Here's the interesting thing about why Alan Rickman believes Snape's part was a really great one. Before filming started, JK told him the biggest secret of the character, about his love connection with Lily Potter. Yes, at that time, only four books had been published, and nobody in the world knew Snape's secret story arc, except for JK and Rickman. It helped me think that he was more complicated and that the story was not going to be as straight down the line as everybody thought. JK even shared with Rickman what was hidden behind the most heartbreaking word in the Harry Potter books. Always. After all this time. Always. Did you cry while watching this scene? Don't answer that. We know you did. Tom Felton lied during his audition and got caught. Now, this guy was the most experienced young actor on the set. Yes, before Harry Potter, he did some other movies, too. And the truth is, he went to the audition not because he dreamt of being a part of the Wizarding World, but because his agent told him to. I was probably the only child in the country who auditioned not having a clue what Harry Potter was. Hmm, how did he get the part, then? There's a funny story that Tom recalled a couple of years ago. One of the first things they asked at the interview is, what is your favorite scene in the book? And there was a row of us, about seven of us, and of course I hadn't read it, so I just, um, the guy next to me said, oh, Gringotts, I love the trolls. So I just said, yeah, same as this guy, yeah, I love the trolls, they're brilliant. Nice try, Tom. Do you know what the director did after he heard this outrageous lie? He burst out laughing. We'll never know for sure, but we think Chris Columbus found something Malfoyish about that lie. Because admit it, Draco would do exactly the same thing in Tom's place. It was clear that Mr. Columbus had a perfect eye for casting the right actors and actresses. He created an unforgettable atmosphere on set and raised an army of inexperienced artists. But there was one person who didn't believe in her acting skills at all, no matter how hard Columbus pushed her to star in the movie. It was the genius J.K. Rowling. Yes, they asked her to play Harry Potter's mother, Lily which could have been the greatest cameo of all in the history of cinema, because JK is indeed Potter's mother. But the author was very adamant, and she rejected the part, saying, I really am not cut out to be an actress, even one who just has to stand there and wave. I would have messed it up somehow. Oh, come on, JK. That was the easiest part of all. Though there are people who are super uncomfortable with being in front of the camera. For the hardcore Harry Potter fans, we have more videos to discover. Check them out on our channel. Thanks for watching, and take care.